Hello and welcome to another Come Fly With Lee video. Today you join me and Maddie on a summer 2022 flight from Slape to Lambeda. This is part one of two videos. This is the outbound leg from Slape to Lambeda, including some low level high speed flying. And stay tuned for part two, which will be the flight from Lambeda back to Slape via Snowdon, the Mainline Straits and part of Anglesey. So we just parked on the grass parking doing some warm up checks before we continue our taxi. However, we're going to taxi past a iconic aircraft that I want to share some information with you uh, in advance of us taxiing past it. The aircraft in question is the Avro Anson and the example based at Slape is a late model that was built in 1950. Um, by this point in time the Avro Anson design was some 20 years old as it entered RAF service originally in 1936 and at this point it was the Royal Air Force first retractable undercarriage aircraft. Over time the Anson became widely known as Faithful Annie and this was due to its reliability, its safety and its ability to absorb aircraft damage. The Anson remained in RAF service until the year 1972 and uh, the example based at Slape is Golf Victor Romeo Oscar Echo and it's the only one of its kind left flying in the UK today. In addition to the Anson we'll also be taxing past a T-28A North American Trojan also based here at Slape and uh, this aircraft was um, designed just after World War II designed um, as a trainer for the F-86 Sabre but also proved to be quite potent in uh, counterinsurgency and ground attack and acted as a good platform during the Vietnam War. So we're currently looking at the Anson now, the twin engine aircraft and the T-28A North American Trojan is the one just here in the hangar with the yellow tips on the wings and the tail. This particular example of the T-28A has a similar performance to a P-51 Mustang and this aircraft saw active service in the Algerian war just before being sold onto the civilian register. So now lined up on the active runway, runway 23. You'll see that I've got a map strapped to my left leg which is the backup route. The primary routing is planned onto the Sky Demon software in front of us and you can see that that's plugged into an external power supply to keep that charged for the flight. On the aircraft you'll notice the switch is in the flight mode which is allowing me now to pre-rotate the rotor up to around about 200 rotor RPM before pulling the stick back and commence in the takeoff run. As we start to move forwards, you'll notice the Sky Demon map zooms automatically out uh, from an, an airfield view, which is useful for taxiing, to a view that's more useful for seeing the local airspace. This automatic zoom function is very useful in an open copy aircraft. Now the zoomed out view that we have uh, shows a red circle of the aerodrome traffic zone surrounding Slape and some other red circles which show the avoidance areas which help keep noise complaints to the airfield to a minimum. Now Slape's no new airfield, it was constructed in 1941, opening in 1943, used by the RAF Advance Flying Training Unit equipped with the Armstrong Whitworth Whitley bomber aircraft. Now as we climb out you may be able to see some of the old World War II dispersal areas which extend beyond the perimeter that's currently in use today. In 1944 Slate became the main training base for the Horsa Glider and a few years later in 1950 it became the base for training air traffic controllers with Vampire and other early jets. Then in 1955 the Shropshire Aero Club was formed by a group of local enthusiasts and now Slape's the only civilian licensed airfield in Shropshire. Now there's many disused airfields in Shropshire. You've got Hinstock, Montford Bridge, High Arkle, Condover, Atcham, just to name a few. Um, but just down here on the left of us whilst we're flying along we notice another type which is a farm strip and there's plenty of farm strips in Shropshire uh, and the surrounding areas. Uh, this particular one uh, is not marked on the map and I can only assume it's designed for aircraft use um, given the, 
the appearance of it. Um, but as we're flying along, it's something that we look out for, um, the potential for aircraft to be flying and coming into land and in, into particular farm strips that may not be identified on charts. And we're also looking out for potential landing areas in places in which we would land if the aircraft would suffer um, an engine failure or the other emergency where we need to land. And somewhere like this may be ideal for us to land in such an event. So as I continue the flight out to the west, uh, we're flying on a weekend, which means that there's little to no military activity and no facility for us to obtain a lower airspace radar service from Shawbury or later in the flight, that of Valley. And so at this point, we are currently talking to London Information. Now, if you look at the airspeed indicator, that's the instrument that's uh, got the green yellow and red sections to it. Underneath that we've got the radio and the radio has got two frequencies to it. You've got the active frequency on the top and the standby frequency on the bottom and at this point in the flight we're currently obtaining a basic service on frequency 124.750 from London Information and we give them our basic aircraft information, call sign, how many people's on board, where we're going from, where we're going to, what height we're at and that allows us to obtain um, airfield pressure settings from them and they'll also give us information of any other aircraft that they're aware of in the area um, they not looking at radar uh, they don't have that facility and so we can't expect any deconfliction from any other aircraft um, it's certainly still um, our responsibility to look out and avoid other aircraft but if we have an emergency en route or we need to speak to somebody we've got somebody already tuned in that knows our information and we can speak to them straight away so I'm just pointing out to Maddy, um, our intended route is uh, down the valley, kind of over the trees, but we're going to keep to the right. Uh, should we suffer an engine failure and need to land, we need the options out to the right of us. Uh, we see the felling of trees to the left, um, but then we spot multiple birds of prey uh, soaring down there to the left of us. And if you're watching in HD, then hopefully you'll be able to see them. And as we continue, we see another one at the same height as us. It was great to see so many of them, and so close as they were, but I wouldn't want them getting any closer. So now we approach Lake Vermwy. We're flying August 2022 and you can see the extent of the drought, how much the water has retreated and how much of uh, the water line you can see. I've never seen it quite so bad as this before. So now we're at the start of the transit across the more remote terrain. There's no one around. We're flying at around about 500 to 800 feet above the surface. We've got higher terrain ahead where the Cambrian mountains lie. Now the views across this section of the route were very impressive. The footage goes some way to show the scale of the mountains and having the uninterrupted view of the open cockpit gyro allows for exploring the countryside in a way that wouldn't be possible in a fixed wing aircraft. The gyro is slow which when you're going or wanting to be somewhere can actually be very annoying but in times like this when the purpose of the flight is to take in the views of the countryside the auto gyro is simply in a class of its own.
So now we're just clearing the last little bit of high ground before we can think about descending as the ground starts to drop away and the coastline starts to come into view. So I'm just pointing out the uh, valley of the Mac Loop where people go to Cad East and Cad West to watch low level military aircraft. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the Mac Loop is a circuit of valleys that's uh, heavily used by UK and overseas military aircraft for practicing low level flying. Um, it's within Class G airspace which is uncontrolled but it's uh, within low flying area 7 of the military flying system. Um, standard for military fixed wing aircraft to be able to fly down to uh, 250 feet above ground level and helicopters down to ground level so uh, today's flight's planned for a weekend to uh, deconflict with this uh, low level military activity in the area we can see the coast now as we fly towards the Morvar estuary and descend for some low level flying which was great fun So having completed that fantastic stretch of low level flying where there was nobody around whatsoever, we've climbed up to negotiate uh, a possible
possibility of there being people around now so given ourselves the minimum of 500 foot clearance and we continue down to the coastline where we meet Barmouth it's a busy day there's quite a lot of people out it's a weekend the weather's great and the views just get better and better as we go along the coastline we follow the coast round to uh, northerly heading which is going to lead us into uh, Lampeter airfield but before we get there we uh, get to take in some more great views just looking at the colour of the water you wouldn't think that you were in Wales so having contacted uh, the Lambetta frequency uh, there's nobody around no answer on the radio so it was just blind calls and uh, we're positioning for a downwind join for runway 23 On the downwind leg now at 1000 feet for runway 23, which is the same orientation to the runway at slate that we took off on runway 23. And now on to the base leg, keeping the circuit nice and tight to avoid overflying the local residents. And now on to final approach. Whilst we fly the uh, approach, we're going to keep our speed at around about 65 miles per hour. Rounding out now for landing. Speed decays, we touch down and then once we're down the stick goes forwards and we can turn the switch from flight into brake mode and start applying the rotor brake it's going to start slowing the rotor down and bring it under control and you may notice the sky demon map automatically recognizing we're on the ground and zooming in to the airfield taxi diagram So we taxi in to the fuel bowser and we're going to put some fuel in uh, straight away before we part the aircraft up and that way we know that when we come to uh, depart we are all ready and set to go. We don't want to find any fuel issues late in the day, we'd rather sort those out earlier rather than later. So as soon as we're out of the aircraft, our first job is to get the rotor tie on. This just gives uh, the rotor some extra security. Should the brake not be holding the rotor, it just prevents the rotor spinning and potentially colliding with uh, nearby structures. Now I've started carrying this in uh, one of my pockets as uh, the last time I visited Lambeda I noticed that the fuel delivery hose was exactly the same size as the hole for the fuel tank on the aircraft which caused a very very slow refuel um, so now I'm just going to put this in here, it's a little collapsible f funnel not for filtering the fuel because the fuel's already uh, checked on the Bowser um, but just purely so we can uh, easily get the fuel into the uh, the aircraft Maddy uh, gives me a hand with the fueling process uh, she's just uh, earthing the aircraft now The uh, pumps are pay at pump, so there's uh, nobody around to give us any help with the refueling. Um, you just put your credit card details in and uh, enter the details it requests, and uh, your card details authorise, and uh, the pump activates. Having uh, refueled the aircraft, uh, another aircraft just taxes in, ready to use the pump. So uh, we work our best to uh, wrap up and uh, vacate the pump to allow the other aircraft to come in. Maddie just 
reels in the earthing cable and uh, we push the aircraft clear, save uh, time and then we push the aircraft to uh, the next hangar which is the designated parking area. So we park the aircraft, walk into the local village, we make the table booking on time, with it being a Sunday I have a beef roast, we find ourselves an ice cream, we go for a walk, we have a sunbathe and return to the aircraft. Remember to join us on part two where it's another amazing flight. We go past Snowdon, the Menai Straits, Amber Morris in Anglesey. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And thanks for watching.